So this is a patient of allergic fungal rhinosinusitis, that is the AFRS. Now this is a patient, male, middle-aged, having a huge pain over the area of the right cheek and the right frontal uh, head region. Uh, right nasal blockage, right nasal discharge, foul smelling discharge, anosmia, which is basically absence of sensation of smell. So this patient's uh, CT scan was done and now this patient was diagnosed as having uh, allergy towards fungus so that the fungus kept on developing and uh, building up inside the patient's sinus cavity. Now, uh, the surgical video of the same patient has been already uploaded. You can just click on the link in the description panel of this video down here and uh, you, can, you can actually look at the entire surgical video. Now, the basics of anatomy. In this video, I'll show you how to basically identify the uh, the fungus which is there inside the sinus of this patient and how you can differentiate the fungus from the soft tissue which may be uh, the pus inside or any other uh, liquid material. So also I'm going to show you the difference between the bony window and the soft tissue window on a CT scan which can help you identify the diagnosis of AFRS. Now quickly this is the coronal section of the patient so basically i'm going to make it uh, be going from the very front part of the patient's head uh, to the back part so what you can see right now is this is a frontal process of the maxilla that's the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid that's the nasal septum of the patient now there's some interesting finding i'm going to directly point out on that is that this patient has uh, a distinct cell in the patient's right frontal sinus region if you can have a look on the patient's left side, you can see a huge pneumatized left frontal sinus, which is completely free of any fungus or any soft tissue or any pus or any kind of a liquid material inside. You can see on the patient's right side. Now, always remember this one thing that in cases of AFRS, only, the, uh, only one side is involved. It could be either right or left but never both. Very, very rarely both sides are involved at the same time with huge fungal load existing at the same time. This patient's right side is severely affected. Now, from the very front part, this is basically the patient's frontal forehead skin. And as we go behind, you can start seeing the frontal bone over here. And that's the right side frontal sinus region that's the patient's left frontal. You can see an intra-sinus septum over here, which as you progress to go behind, uh, you can see it disappearing, and this is one huge cavity of the patient's left sinus. But now, you can see something on the patient's right side. You can see a distinct cell over here and one more cell over here. Now, which one is the sinus and which one is the cell? You have to uh, clarify that before you start operating on the patient. So for that, you have to go on the very front part. As you keep on going behind, just uh, keep your focus on this uh, thick septa, which is dividing the two structures over here. And as we keep on going behind, behind, you can see this structure is very huge. Uh, and this structure progressively becomes very small and narrow. And later on, this one opens up here. You can see this is the opening up here and then you can start seeing the connection happening between these two cells or two structures and then they become one and then eventually it opens up into the frontal recess and into the ethmoid sinuses and eventually in the nose so this is a basically soft tissue window i'll be showing you it uh, much better on the uh, bony window now the reason to have a soft tissue window in cases of afrs is that you can understand the load of the fungus inside this patient. Now, if we go a little anteriorly, you can start seeing this is a right nasal cavity, completely normal so far. That's the patient's eyeball, that is the orbit on the right side. Uh, you can start seeing in the nose, little bit of collection here, that's the maxillary sinus over here. And you can see, if I just zoom this for you guys, you can see a huge bright white shadow over here. You can see multiple white shadows, bright shadows over here, here as well. And you can see alternate dark and gray shadow as well. Now, uh, you can see in the frontal sinus area, that's the uh, bright uh, white shadow over here. Multiple alternate black and white, black and gray basically. Now, what does this bright white spot indicate is that the actual fungal material inside. That is the actual fungus inside 
surrounded by all that uh, mucin and all the fungal proteins that the uh, the patient has inside the uh, the right side sinuses so as we keep on going behind you can see that's a huge white bright spot that's the huge local collection of the fungus multiple sites over here so whatever you see in dark grayish or black spots is basically the liquid or the pus inside or the soft tissue basically blocking it and whatever you can see in bright white is basically all the fungus inside surrounded by the fungal proteins the mucin the sticky uh, mucoid secretion which is basically gray and black so as you keep on going behind you can see multiple spots over here the, the main focus being on this side and you can see that the entire maxillary sinus on the lateral aspect inside completely filling up uh, and completely filled with uh, fungal material that's the eyeball so if this patient has a long-term uh, AFRS fungal infection you can see that's just a thin bone that divides the eyeball and the maxillary sinus if the infection is too much it can have an expansion on the bone the bone may become thin and eventually may rupture and the fungal material may start entering in the patient's orbit although this is the superficial infection of the fungus it is a non-invasive fungal infection it may not enter directly into the orbital structures or the brain through blood vessels but with compression and expansion may cause effect on the orbit or the brain lining right there so you can see that's the brain of the patient and just a thin bone separates the brain and the nose and the sinus cavity so you can imagine if it's a long-term thing the patient may have a thinned out bone and brain infection as well so it's best to get the surgery done now moving on to the posterior part you can see the entire fungal load completely filling up with the uh, ethmoidal sinus the maxilla the frontal we already saw uh, which i'll be talking much more in detail on the bony scan you can see a little bit of air shadow over here so alternate air shadow is an indication of active bacterial infection as well secondary we can see a huge fungal load in the maxillary sinus rest all the cavities are normal it's just one side of the patient as usual it affects only the uh one side of the patient anytime any given time so as we keep on going posteriorly we are going behind the orbit becomes narrow this is almost the posterior ethmoidal cavity you can see a huge fungal load over here now i've actually shown in the surgical video how the fungus looks like exactly and how you can operate in such complicated cases without giving any injury to the eyeball or the brain inside so if you keep on going posteriorly this is a spinoid sinus on the right side you can see the spinoid collection uh, rest is almost normal so i'm going to quickly shift on to the uh, the bony window over here now that's the bony window and not the soft tissue now the first point of identification in case of a bony window is that in case of bony window you can see the the internal architecture of the bone actual bone you can see the outer and the inner table uh, which you cannot see on the soft tissue window because on the soft tissue window as you can see over here that's the uh, soft tissue window uh, the bone is basically seen as a bright white area with no differentiation between the internal architecture the outer and the inner table basically of the thick bone uh, also you cannot see any 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 bone marrow internal structure on the bone it's just bright white in uh, appearance so that is basically the first basic difference of the uh, soft tissue and the bony window basically so that's the first point and uh, that's the axial section the coronal which we already saw so you can see that's the bright white bone not showing any internal architecture so that is how you differentiate the first point now coming back to the bony window over here uh, my main aim on the bony window is to see and study the uh, the bony changes if at all any caused by the the fungal load and the compression from inside i'm going to go in the very anterior aspect and i'm going to show you that area of the frontal sinus now the most the most important challenge in this case is the uh, opening of the frontal sinus and to drain the fungus from within 
So if you can see in the very anterior part, you can see one cavity uh, getting filled up with the, uh, the fungal load inside. As you keep on going posteriorly, you can see one more uh, opening here, which we still not know is whether the, fa the frontal sinus or the interfrontal septal cell or the intra sinus cell or any type of a coon cell, third grade or fourth grade. But uh, as we keep on going behind, you can see the septa is still intact and uh, we have two distinct uh, cavities uh, filled up with the fungus over here. Now in such cases, what you have to notice is that how to differentiate between an intra sinus septal cell or inter sinus septal cell, which could be a pneumatized uh, cell, inter frontal sinus septal cell, or it's just a coon cell three or coon cell four. Now, you always have to look for the base, which is the uh, the frontal beak. Now, here the base is intact. As you can see, as we keep on going posteriorly, the size of this keeps on increasing and the size of this keeps on decreasing. Now, as we keep on going behind, let me just focus. Yeah. So, as we keep on going behind, you can still see the septa intact, the frontal floor that is a beak is still intact. Uh, keep on going posteriorly you can start seeing that the frontal floor is not present over here and the cell opens in this direction but this cell is still not having any uh, opening on the inferior part as we keep on going behind behind you can start seeing that the septa disappears right now and this has a common connection and if you keep on going behind you can start seeing that the frontal recess area and this becomes one common cavity so this is basically nothing but inter so this becomes the patient's right frontal this is a patient's left frontal and this eventually is basically uh, the uh, interfrontal sinus septal cell okay this is the interfrontal sinus septal cell which is opening into the right side frontal recess and draining in the right side so we have to see, once we open up the frontal sinus area, we have to open up this interfrontal septal cell over here and try to drain that. And you can see the interfrontal sinus septa over here, which is between the, uh, the cell over here and the actual right frontal disappears much more posteriorly. So the entire anterior aspect uh, attached to the frontal beak, we may have to drill that portion and once you open up the cell over here, uh, we will have a drainage pathway to go through to the right actual frontal sinus over here. So you can see the right frontal sinus area opens separately over here towards the floor of the frontal recess. So you may have uh, two distinct openings once you try to open up the frontal recess area, which I have already shown how to do that and differentiate that. Uh, in the surgical video you can just click on the link below so the rest of the thing is very simple straightforward is that the ethmoid and the posterior and the anterior ethmoid the spinoid the maxilla but the, the real challenge over here is you have to open the frontal on both the sides which is always a uh, difficulty if you do not know the anatomy so uh, I'm gonna shift on to the surgical video in the next uh, video down there so I hope you understood the basics of the CD scan on this side because uh, if at all you have any issue, you can directly message me on the description panel below and I'll reply to all your queries. Thank you so much.